Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today I'm going to make a single geode ice dye. I prep the shirt like normal and I have it turned inside out. I had some video difficulties and didn't capture the first part of this process on tying the geode, but down below in the description for this video, you'll find links to several other videos where I show how to tie a geode shirt. I prefer to go ahead and ice dye my geodes when they're totally dry. That way I get better color saturation in the middle of the geodes. If I go ahead and start applying the dye right now while the shirt is barely damp, I probably am going to end up with some pretty large streaks or areas of white in the middle of the shirt. So I'm going to set it aside and allow it to dry out for a few days before I start applying the dye. For this shirt, I pulled a variety of different earth tone colors. Okay, so the shirt's been drying for a few days and so it's totally and completely dry and it's time to apply the dye. I've placed the shirt on top of a rack, but in order to keep the dye and the ice on top of the shirt, I need to have some kind of an ice barrier. And I'm gonna use some silicone cake molds to make myself an ice barrier. I have a link down below in the description for where I purchased these silicone cake molds. I'm attaching them together and then wrapping them around the shirt. To hold them up next to the shirt, I'm attaching some wooden clothespins to my rack. As I mentioned earlier, I'm using a variety of earth tones for this shirt, and I'm going to place the dye in each of the sinew sections. So let me give you a list of the dye colors that I'm using. I'm starting with Camouflage from Pro Chemical and Dye, followed by Golden Oak from Pro Chemical, Sage from Pro Chemical, Harvest Wheat from Pro Chemical, followed by Chamois from Dharma, Havana Brown from Pro Chemical, Camel from Pro Chemical, Golden Brown from Dharma, and Balsam Fur from Pro Chemical and Dye. Initially, I put the colors on the shirt in this order, and then from there, I just randomly placed them in the remaining sections. I'm going to use the Ecru from Dharma that you see up on my rack, but I'm going to use that at the very end. Now that I have the dye applied to the shirt, I'm going to add a little bit of additional soda ash over the top of the dye just to make sure that when all the ice melts and runs through the shirt, I still have plenty of soda ash remaining in the shirt to react with the dye.
To add a little added dimension to the shirt, over the top of the ice, I'm gonna add a sprinkle of ecru. I'm adding quite a bit of this dye. It's not a real strong color, so it's not gonna overtake the other colors that I've put on the shirt. Then I'm gonna set the shirt aside and allow the ice to melt. After the ice melted, there was still quite a bit of undissolved dye left sitting on top of the shirt, so I added a second layer of ice and allowed it to continue to process. For this shirt, I allowed it to process about three days after I added on the second layer of ice. You don't need to do that though, but you do need to let it process for at least 24 hours after the ice melts. Then to rinse the shirt, I took it to my utility sink and I began rinsing in cold water to rinse out any of the remaining soda ash. After rinsing in cold for a while, I untied the shirt and then I gradually warmed the water up to hot and continued rinsing to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. There was quite a bit of excess dye coming from the shirt, so instead of just continuing to rinse, I ran some hot water in my utility sink and put a little splash of blue Dawn dish detergent into the water. I changed out the water when it would cool off and continued the soaking process until the water was almost clear. Then I put the shirt into my washing machine along with a little bit of Dharma's textile detergent and washed it using a hot water cycle. After the shirt was washed and dried, this is what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? I really like this one. I like the color palette. I like all of the earth tones together, kind of the more reddish browns from the golden oak and the harvest wheat. I think those turned out looking really pretty. I also like that green, that more olive type green, but I actually didn't even use any olive in this shirt. I did use some camouflage and sage. Havana brown is kind of green and balsam fir. If you're looking for earth tones, I think Pro Chemical and Dye has a lot of great earth tones. Not that Dharma doesn't because they have a lot of great earth tones too. But if you're somebody who orders from Pro Chemical and Dye, I think they have a great selection of earth tones. Along with the earth tones, there is a little bit of a blue split in the shirt. I'm not entirely sure which color that's from. I suspect it might be from the balsam fir, but I don't know for sure. The white area that you see kind of at the top of the front of the shirt, that one white strip, I think that was probably chamois. Chamois is a pretty light color and I don't think it showed up a whole lot on this shirt. But overall, I'm really happy with it. I went ahead and showed a photo of the sleeves because I get asked sometimes what the sleeves ended up looking like and it's kind of hard to photograph them since they're so long. So I just went ahead and photographed them by themselves and put them in a slide where you could see what they looked like. So overall, I'm really happy with this shirt. I think it turned out looking really pretty. I think it'll be a great shirt to wear during the fall and winter. But what do you guys think? Do you like the shirt? Drop me a comment down below and let me know. And I'd also appreciate it if you'd like my video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.